Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by PILMA. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. Hello, everyone. This is Ken Hardison, and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have the honor and privilege of having Paul Fariga, who is a uh, best-selling author of Finding Your Capital S Story, Why Your Story Drives Your Brand. So, Paul, thank you for being on our uh, podcast today. Thank you, Ken. It's great to be here with you and uh, with all of your uh, audience. Absolutely. So, I told you before we started, i like for you to just tell me your story. Tell me who you are, how you got to where you are, and, and what you do, and then we'll, we'll get into more details, okay? Awesome. Well, Ken, as you know, we're going to talk a lot about storytelling today, and a lot of what you folks do is around storytelling. So I think we have a lot to chat about. So there's a story behind why I do what I do, and that story begins with somebody who was a journalist for two decades, me, a period of time during which I wrote probably 10,000 stories and edited another 10,000. I know that because in the old days when people read these things called newspapers, they actually would paste your story into what they called a clip book. And uh, when the Cincinnati Inquirer, the first place I worked at, uh, digitized their library and put it online, they sent me my clip book so I can go through and count all the stories. Anyway, during that 20 year career, I covered everything from murders to the White House. And that's a lot of beginnings, middles and ends, Ken. And so I really learned the power of storytelling because I saw people in their best moments, and in their worst moments. And then for more than two decades now, I've been in the agency business. I started out at Ketchum Public Relations, the fifth largest PR firm in the world. It was like getting an advanced degree in PR. In 2002, and in fact, this month, March of 2022, is our 20th anniversary, we started WordWrite. And that's uh, my firm. And the reason we started WordWrite was, in large measure, we felt that the clients we most wanted to help, which includes law firms and lawyers, were not getting the right kind of help they needed to share their story. And in fact, we came up with this concept that you mentioned is at the heart of the book and at the heart of a trademark process we have called story crafting. We identified what we call the capital S story. And for your audience, if you think about uh, individuals and firms, there's a reason why they exist, a passion that motivates them and drives them. We call this their capital S story because it answers these critical questions, Ken. Why would somebody buy from you? So in the case of a law firm or lawyer, why would they engage you? Why would your client engage you? Why would somebody work for you? And you know, Ken, a lot of the work that you folks do is help attorneys grow their firms, right? So you have to attract and retain talent, which is a huge problem in the legal industry these days, right? And then also partnering, because certainly a lot of times attorneys working in this space will develop relationships with other professionals who can be helpful to them. And they need to know, why would I want to partner with you as a lawyer or your law firm versus other people who do the same thing that you do? Yeah, absolutely. I know I agree. I mean, I, I always said, uh, you know, you got to answer two questions when somebody goes to your website. Uh, do I need a lawyer? And if I do need a lawyer, why in the hell should I choose you over everybody else? Exactly. Exactly. And you know, this is a crowded space, right? Oh yeah. The personal okay. injury space is very crowded. Yeah. Look at the and, TV. Yeah. All you have to do is watch exactly. TV. Exactly. Yeah. And so there's a table stake there, right? And that table stake is, are you a lawyer? Do you have experience in personal injury? And am I willing to consider you? But beyond that, you know, a lot of those table stakes as well, um, how firms charge, how awards are handled. It's similar from firm to firm. So that's not what's going to get you the business, right? What's going to get you the business is why should I hire, you know, from your own experience, Ken, why should I hire Ken versus five other firms run by somebody with the same demographic, same amount of experience, same certifications? What's your story? What drives you to help people like me who might hire you, right? And that's the heart of the work that we do is help attorneys and firms uncover 
that essential story. That's the one thing that you own that nobody else does. If you're competing against a firm down the street, guess what? They are also licensed in the same state. They have to be. That's yeah. what lawyers tell me a lot of times when I'm speaking. I, I say, you got to get a differentiator and they'll say, but you, we can't because we all do the same thing. We, we're guided by the same ethics. And, but I think when they say that, I, I say you're missing the point. And uh, this is where somebody like you comes in if they can't figure it out themselves. That mm-hmm. is the truth because, I mean, look at the TV. Like I said, look at the TV, look at the Internet. Uh, PI practice is the most competitive. Them and car dealerships. Uh, yes, they control the airwaves, uh, and it's because it's big money. I mean, that's you know, the way that's it works. Absolutely right. You know, our firm is our headquarters is in Pittsburgh, and um, one of the firms that we've worked with in this space over the years, the principal told me some years ago that if he didn't spend about two million dollars a year on TV advertising, and, and you know, Pittsburgh's not New York City, right? Uh, they couldn't dominate the airwaves. And interestingly, Ken, what you mentioned there, and you know, your firm and your team do lots of great work with law firms to help them soup up and improve uh, their marketing. It always struck me as funny. You mentioned car dealerships. There are actually marketing firms out there who looked at lawyers and they said, well, we do car dealerships. They kind of advertise the same way as lawyers do. So let's go after lawyers. And that just kind of strikes me as is maybe the wrong thing. Although I, you know, there are some similarities like on the tactical end, like buying the TV time or doing the internet ads, you know, under the hood, there are similarities, but a lawyer who's passionate about getting results for his or her clients is not the same thing as buying the latest pickup truck. So yeah, this process, I actually read uh, you can go to your website, which uh, go ahead and tell people where your website is. Sure. While our web- yeah. Our website uh, for your audience is Word, like what we're speaking right now, right, which is what all lawyers do, PR, as in public relations. So wordrightpr.com forward slash story crafting. And you will land on the page that, Ken, you're talking about, which has all the resources about the book a sample chapter, and also describes the work that we do to help providers of complex services, including lawyers, better share their story. Yeah, I read it last night. It's a good read. Well, thank you. But, you know, I like these questions. These are the kind of questions I like to think about when I'm talking, when I'm trying to figure out, you know, what my differentiator is. is what, What's your purpose? You know, that's yes. a Simon Sinek book. Why? You know, you got to know that. I mean, I've, I've watched him on... Uh, TED Talks and read his yes. book, smart guy, you know, and then uh, what is the market? Well, let, I'll let you do it, but what are these five burning questions? I don't want to paraphrase it. You tell me what, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the five burning questions, uh, we came up with this concept because as we started working with clients years ago, including law firms, Ken, you know, the same questions kept coming up over and over again in terms of improving the marketing, right? So Questions such as, you know, what is your market position? Uh, why do you exist? Which, as you mentioned, Simon Sinek, whose first book is called Start With Why. There's a lot of similarities and alignment between his thinking and what we do. And you really need to get the answers to these five questions out on the table. Another one that's really important and that you folks work with, uh, you know, firms with all the time is what's your call to action? What do you want people to do, right? And a lot of times, um, there's missed opportunities there, right? Certainly, you want somebody to call for a consultation or something like that. Uh, But a lot of times, lawyers forget, or as you often say, Ken, they don't teach you this in law school. You don't know all the ways to get people to respond to you directly. And that's really what you want to do, right? Because marketing, it's an investment. But it's also an investment that has dollars, big dollar signs in front of it, potentially, if you do it well. So you want to know, we often say at our firm, Ken, don't spend a single dollar on your marketing unless you know what it's going to get for you, right? And so just being on TV, okay, fine. That's, you know, you can do that. But if you're on TV, what's your call to action? What do you want people to do? And to your point, what's the differentiator? 
why is a potential client going to call you rather than somebody else, right? Why are they going to go to your website and download the free guide to 10 things you need to know before you hire a PI attorney, right? These are the kinds of things that, that you know, they don't teach you in law school, but if you want to effectively market and grow your firm, you really need to think about. Yeah, I mean, it's like I always tell people, I mean, uh, you can be the best lawyer in the world, but if don't nobody know about you, you ain't going to get very far. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, you know, Ken, that is such an important point because uh, most of the lawyers we've had the privilege to work with over the years, they're really passionate about what they do. And in this space, you can literally be changing somebody's life by getting a successful outcome for them, right? This isn't, you know, I'm in some big corporate law firm and, you know, I want a, a minor case and I'm proud of myself. It's somebody needs help. And because of my involvement as a legal professional, I've made a difference for them, you know, financially, et cetera, et cetera. So exactly. there's a story there, right? Yeah. You know, and the deal is, too, I remember when I, I used to do nursing home abuse cases. And yes. uh, we on several occasions, we made them redo their SOPs on how to handle something or, or institute new trainings. So we yeah. not only help the client, but the client it wasn't just about the money, but they didn't want this shit to happen to nobody else. And, well, exactly they right. set, and they would not settle the case unless this company, this nursing home, would either put in this training or these record or whatever or SOPs or whatever and make it part of the deal. Yes. No matter how much money they offered them, because it wasn't just about the money. It was about doing the right thing and protecting future people. So that's that's the great thing about, you know, and PI lawyers get terrible raps. Yes, know, they do. We're yeah. ambulance chasers, we're blood suckers. You know, and every, every lawyer is a, is a crook, except the lawyer, except my lawyer. That's my right. Lawyer. <laughs> yeah. That's you, know, exactly. it, you know, and it's, uh, it's funny, though. But, yeah, what we do is uh, it happens to be, uh, it can be lucrative if you know what you're doing and you're good at it. But it, we really are game changers for society, not just people individualized, but society, too. And that's one of the reasons I chose it. I mean, I really... I love helping the underdog. I've always, that's why I don't gamble because I always bet on the underdog. And it, it don't, <laughs> you know, and my, old, my old law partner, he said the, the race don't always go to the swiftest or the fastest, but that's the way to bet. You know? <laughs> I, I totally agree, Ken. And, you know, I think that's true of so many attorneys who practice in this arena that desire to work with somebody who seems to be the underdog, right? Yeah. Be the champion, if you will. And, you know, one of the things we do in our work with law firms is we help them identify what we call their archetypal story. So an example would be the underdog, right? If I said to you, and you were thinking about hiring me and said to me, why should I hire you, your firm? And I said, because we're a David and Goliath story. You don't have to be a biblical scholar to know that David and Goliath is the underdog. That is an example of an archetypal story right? And so what we do in working with firms is we take that kind of an archetype because it's, it's memorable for a variety of reasons. And um, great thinkers like Joseph Campbell, the mythologist, and Carl Jung, the psychotherapist, have done tons of work that's informed what we do to understand that these storylines are baked into our brain, these archetypes. And then we align that with the firm, right? So a lot of firms that, that you work with that are in this space, they're specialized, right? Maybe they do social security or maybe do the workers comp, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So there's a story around that, an archetype that can explain why they're the right firm to be hired, the right attorney to be hired, because if you're looking to address a specific legal concern, here's my story. Right. And that's a lot of the work that we do. This process, how long does this process take, Paul? It takes on the front end about a month or so, um, sometimes 45 days, sometimes 60. So think about a solo practitioner or a small firm, right? A managing partner and some associates. It's going to move faster there because you're really talking to the principal of the firm. And you want to make sure that the story is shared throughout the firm. You want the person who answers the phone, right? Your marketing person, if you have one your associates to be able to share the same story, not like robots in the same words, 
But what we do on the front end is we get everybody in a room and we ask them these questions we've been talking about. Why would somebody hire you, work for you, partner with you? What we find all the time, Ken, is those answers aren't the same. So we need to get people on the same page before we can start shaping the story. That shaping of the story, we call it uncover, develop, and share. So the uncover piece is about a month. And then we develop a plan to share that story. That development part is critical because this is where you're thinking about where you're going to invest the resources to grow your firm. And the answer isn't always exactly the same for every firm. Some firms are going to find that it's more important for them to focus first on their web presence, or, or maybe they need to be speaking, or maybe they need to be in front of partners, organizations, right, that they can work with. So the right mix happens in that developed phase. And then where the money typically gets spent is when you're out there sharing the story. One of the reasons why we developed our process, Ken, is we find that for really smart people who don't know a lot about marketing, which describes often a lot of lawyers, it's real easy to waste a lot of money buying TV commercials and spending money on things that may not drive results for you. So that's what we focus on. Get the story right first so that your ideal potential client knows who you are and remembers who you are. Then develop the right plan to share that story. Whatever the right mix of media, tactics, et cetera, you need to share that story and then decide where you're going to spend the bulk of the money, which is in the sharing of that story. Far too often, you know, when I'll talk to attorneys, they'll say, oh, we spent a lot of money in SEO and it didn't do anything. And, and I'll say, okay, well, what work did you do before? Oh, we just hired a firm and asked them to do it. Or as happens a lot of times, Ken, and you know this from the work you folks do, there's a firm out there that sells itself to law firms as knowing what to do. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But I've never met a lawyer who wants to be a cookie cutter, right? So, you know, just like, oh, because I've worked with 20 other law firms, I'm going to take the same SEO keywords and stuff your website with them. And you'll get the same thing as another lawyer, you know, in another nearby city. Now, sometimes that's part of a good strategy because best practices, what we call them in our field, you know, if they're working, you should look at them, right? But just carbon copy implementation of going out there and sharing the story doesn't deliver the same results as knowing what your unique story is, developing your own plan to share it, and then start spending the big money to share that story. You said something, you know, and I, I preach this. I tell people, don't spend a dollar yes. on advertising until you get your message right. Mm -hmm. Because why do you want to just throw money up against the wall and see what sticks? You know, and I was reading your uh, chapter in your book. You talk about Johnny Watermaker and, and yes, I that you know that's getting harder and harder to do. By the way, if you do multiple channels, uh, yes, we were talking about that. I do mastermind, and we had yes. we just got yes. uh, We were talking about that, and it's easier when you're smaller and doing like one or two things. But when you get to where you're doing TV, radio, billboards. Uh, OTT, uh, social media, and you get people that call or whatever. I mean, you can track the, you can track the website, but then again, maybe it didn't just come from the website. Maybe it came because they saw you on TV and then went and looked you up or saw a billboard or a friend told them and they went and checked you out, but then they got the number that's a tracking number. So it's getting harder and harder because I'm a, I'm a big direct response guy and I've always yes. I had three or 400 tracking numbers when I was doing in my prime. I really wanted to know, but I think it's getting harder and harder, but still can be done to a certain degree. The deal with what you're saying is I see so many lawyers waste so much money because they really don't have a message or differentiator and they don't know what, who their ideal client is. They don't know they're not marketing to the right people. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, I've had a lawyer that, Advertising for hip replacement cases and this type of hip replacement was not done in North Carolina. So he spent a hundred thousand dollars. He got zero cases and then he figured it out. Yeah. Afterwards. Or yeah. So that happened, but he had the right message, but there was no clients because there was nobody in North Carolina that would use that hip. And all the doctors that use that hip replacement. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Stories knows. like that. They break my heart again, because yeah, um, you know, to run a profitable firm requires a number of disciplines. And one of them is making sure 
that when you have the money to spend on marketing, that you're spending it in the right place to deliver the value that you need, right? And, and that's a perfect example of what I was mentioning earlier. You know, I'm gonna help you with these hip cases. Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Managing Partner, uh, Mr. Attorney, I, I didn't bother to look and see whether or not any of these cases, you know, were, were existed in North Carolina. So I know you're a PR agency, but do you do other stuff? I mean, like, oh, yes. you're a full agency? Yeah, so here's, here's the uh, description. So I mentioned uncover the story, develop it, and then share it. The develop and share part for your audience, PESO. Think of this as an acronym, not the Mexican currency. Paid, earned, shared, and owned. Now, a friend of mine named uh, Jenny Dietrich, who has a firm in Chicago, came up with this concept. So in the 21st century, you need to do paid digital advertising. And I think most really successful personal injury attorneys understand that's part of the mix. Earned, traditional PR. Shared is organic, social, primarily. And then your owned content is everything that's on your website, everything that demonstrates your thought capital. So when I gave the example a bit earlier about a download that you could have on your website, 10 questions to ask before you hire a personal injury attorney. That would be an example of own content. A few things we know, Ken. No firm has 100% of their spending in one basket. Never seen a firm where that's worked. And the other thing is, never seen a firm where they just divide it up. 25% paid digital, 25% earned, 25% shared. It's got to be the right mix for your firm. And because every firm and every attorney is unique, that mix is gonna be slightly different. Like you said earlier, it's gonna depend on your specialties, what areas of, of law you're focused on, who's on your team, right? What sort of expertise do you have? I mean, you know, a large firm that does medical malpractice, they might have subject matter experts in the office, right? So if you're not talking about that as part of your story, you're missing an opportunity. So the way we practice what we do, it's, it's accurate to say we started out as a pure PR firm, but I'd like your audience to think about that word peso, the right mix of paid, earned, shared, and owned. And oh, of course, certainly in the personal injury space, sometimes paid is, you know, it's radio, it's TV, right? That's billboards. Yeah, absolutely. Got to tell you a funny quick story. Because you are so right. You, you can measure some things well and some things you can't. And you really do need to understand the full picture where things are coming from. We worked with a firm a few years ago. They had an intake form. And they would ask people, how did you hear about the firm? One of the choices was billboards. Well, at that time, the firm wasn't doing any billboard advertising. So every time somebody came in and checked that box... <laughs> I know that actually happened to me before I was doing billboards. This is no lie. And so what I did was I added another question. What were you looking at when you dialed the phone? That would give us a little bit more. And then and that still might not be a hundred percent, but it was better than just the general deal. How'd you hear about us? Yes. Well, I found 50% of the time it was not right. And we could drill down a little bit more on that one extra question. Probably got us to 80%. Still didn't get us a hundred percent. You know, but I like to do the micro and the macro. And then I like to just look look at everything I did and how many cases did I take? How much is my cost per acquisition if I take everything in the world? Yes, yes. And then I could kind of look at that too. And then I still try to drill down because right now, I don't know what you're seeing out there, but all our lawyers that are trying OTT, they're not getting, they can't track that they're getting any response from it. What I'm saying is, and they've tried yeah. different things. And so now we've just decided it's a branded play right now until it gets more popular. I mean, but I think it's coming. It's here, but I think for the PI market, it's probably not. If you got a limited budget, it's probably not the first place to put your money, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, one of the things that uh, for your audience to consider, OTT is one of the hot new things. So there's uh, plenty of people out there trying to sell that. Sell it. Yeah. But they're selling it not because it's effective, but because it's a new thing they have to sell. Yeah. Right. 
And, and so that's why, you know, TV or, or radio or even print sometimes, man, you go back to the 70s when it first became legal uh, for attorneys to advertise their services. People have been doing that stuff for 40 some years. Well, if it works for your firm and for your practice, do it. You don't have to do OTT or something like that just because that's the new, new thing, right? Now, maybe it, it works for you. And if you have a big enough marketing budget as a firm that you can experiment with that, that's great. But you know what you said, Ken, is, is really right on point. We have these sayings in, in our field. Uh, you have to hit somebody at least five times, five different ways to make an impression. Some people say it's seven. Regardless, I, I was um, talking with somebody this uh, morning before we got on to do this episode. And I said, look, this is what we say at our firm. You will know that you're communicating your message enough when somebody you respect comes to you and says, I'm seeing you everywhere. Or sometimes they'll say, I'm tired of seeing you everywhere. And I got to tell you, Ken, now you know you're doing it enough. That's because somebody who cares about you is going to pay more attention to your marketing and advertising than somebody who doesn't. And if somebody who cares about you shares that with you, it's like, okay, we're doing enough now. I think you're right. I always tell people six or seven times when I used to do my TV buy, I uh, actually went to a media buying academy to learn how to buy TV because I wanted uh-huh. I just, crazy, right? But I wanted to understand it because I was spending millions. I was spending seven figures and I wanted to understand it. You know, when you're paying that kind of money, you want to understand the lingo, uh-huh. right? And so I always really tried to push, you know, you got reach and frequency. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Absolutely. Reach is how far, how many thousand eyeballs are watching you. And then the frequency, how many times they see you in a week or a month. And I was always shooting for six to seven. And I felt like if we got to 10 or 11, it was too much. People would get mad at us. But if I felt like we were under six or under five, that we won't really, it won't really work in a good enough to where we really making a, etching in their brain right i don't know if i was right or wrong but that's what i shot for yeah you know? well, i mean yeah. you had a successful firm yeah we did pretty now you help other firms i think you were probably right on the money there my friend <laughs> yeah so tell us now just to do this because this intrigues me because this is where lawyers that's one of the reasons i want to interview you I try to help lawyers, but this is the hardest part for lawyers to get is getting their message right, their differentiator. It really is, and it's the most important. So what kind of money would this cost the law firm to do it? Because that's what they're going to be wanting to know. I mean, you know, that's what that that first question everybody always wants. But what what does it cost? Yeah. And it might be different for different firms. I don't know. It is different for different firms, Ken. And, And the upfront expense... Um, it's typically uh, 35 to, to 50 grand for a mid-sized law firm. Right. Uh, smaller firm is more towards the, the 35. And the, where most of the money gets spent is, as we talked about earlier in the episode, on the actual sharing of the story. So certainly, um, you know, there's plenty of providers out there who, you know, I'll do your SEO for your law firm for $200 a month or something like that. And, and, um, you know, again, that would lead me back to saying, you know, what are you really getting uh, for your money? It's right to think about what we do, kind of like if you decided you were going to drive to California. Now, would you just jump in the car without gassing up or having a plan on where you were going and, and start spending money? You could wind up in entirely the wrong place, right? So, yeah, it's a bit of an investment to make the plan, to have the itinerary, which is what we do on the front end there by uncovering the story and developing it. And then you decide, okay, well, it's going to take me uh, six hotel nights um, and it's going to, you know, this amount of money for this and that, you know, rather than just jump in the car and and start driving and not have a budget and have an idea of what you're going to do. So, so that's it. Yeah. And here's the deal too, not to interrupt you, but yes, I'm getting Alzheimer's or old timers. You know, if you're going out to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, thirty-five to fifty thousand is nothing if you get the message right because it'll oh. tenfold pay for itself. You know, I'm not. I'm just telling what I think. I mean, I'm not trying to advocate one way or the other. Mm-hmm. I'm here just to, whether it's you or they don't hire you. 
it's crazy to spend this money without get not getting you know the differentiator the me- right message going to the right people because and i see it so many times i just think it's important I mean, well I, I don't think i know it's important mm-hmm. and you know ken uh, for your audience if you think about your story as an individual practitioner or as a firm your story grows over time right so if you get that message right at the beginning, it's going to help propel your growth. So it's not like looking at it and saying, well, that's a lot of money to spend right now. Okay, if that's the way you're going to look at it, but if you're going to look at it as if I make this investment now in two years, five years, 10 years, how will my story evolve? How much can I grow this firm? How much can I grow my client base, right? I mean, I think that's the right right way to look at it. I, I mean... There's probably not anybody who, who is out there in the audience who thinks, oh, yeah, I, I talked to a client. He wanted to hire the attorney who had no experience, right? So that story, the more experience you have, the better the story you can tell, right? In that story, it evolves. It's, that's where, as a lawyer and as a firm, your story is like a book. Chapter one is, you know, you found the firm. Why did you found the firm? What passion drove you to create the firm? Oh, chapter two, we start to have some success. Here's some great client stories and the results we got for clients. Chapter three, oh, we brought in some more people. There's specialists, you know, attorneys in these areas and these areas and more success, right? So that story evolves and that investment you make on the front end is going to pay those dividends year over year as you grow the firm. I was just thinking this would be something great for your intake people to have when they're sitting there trying to sign the client up on the phone. Uh, because that's when they got to sell, right? That's yes, when, you know, absolutely. And that's how to, and what better time, let them brag about the firm, you know. It sounds better coming from them than from you. Sell, no, it really it really does. And, and you know, you want to catch people as early in the process as you can, right? Yeah. Because for the managing partner or the person who's actually handling the cases to be on the front end of the sales the funnel is taking them away from what they're really good at and what they need to keep doing to get results and drive the firm. So you're absolutely right, Ken. Everybody in the firm needs to be able to crystallize the story in a way that when somebody's just calling around or form on the website or Facebook or whatever they're doing, they're getting the story right away. And they're saying to themselves, that's interesting. I want to talk more to those folks. So let me ask you this, and then we're getting we're running over, but I do want to ask you this question. So how is this different than the old 30 second, 60 second elevator that we we try to teach? You know, when somebody asks you what do you do for a living or who do you work for, and you, you give them the little spiel, you know, whatever it might be, you know, we defend the little guys or whatever we equal the playing field, you know, we help people get justice, whatever. But that's very simplistic though. Yes. I, I think. Uh, yes. Yes. So that's a great question. And, you know, one example of how you would use the work that we create with firms is in the 30 or 60 second example, but that's only one example. We use a tool in our practice we call the message pyramid. And if you think about a pyramid turned on its point with the broad end at the top, the the 30 or 60 second statement describes the overall firm. And a good example would be, you know, our firm is in the business of helping people who have no voice uh, to get the right results when they've been wronged by a large healthcare organization. Okay. And what you want is think of it like a conversation, Ken. You want people to keep saying to you, like at a cocktail party, tell me more. Okay. And then let's take your example from earlier. Let's say that the attorney who spent all that money on um, bad hip replacement, lead development. Let's say that they actually could get those cases. So you want somebody to say, okay, my mom has a hip problem. She's got a bad hip uh, and it's going to have to be replaced. And, this, and then you want to have a subsidiary message that talks about how you work in that specific area. So this message pyramid becomes like a roadmap, a roadmap for your TV, for your owned content on your website, for your social. It's a master kind of a roadmap that enables you to not only do the 30 second or the 60 second, 
description of what you do, but to draw people deeper into a conversation with the firm about your unique story and your expertise. Well, this has been fascinating. So if somebody wants to get up with you and learn more, Paul, how can they do that? Uh, go to WordWritePR, W-O-R-D-W-R-I-T-E, P like Paul, R, R like Richard, dot com forward slash storycrafting. And as we talked about earlier in the episode, you'll find all the resources about the book, uh, ability to contact us, and learn more about the work we do. It's been a pleasure and informative, and I appreciate you taking time to do it. Ken, thank you so much for having me on. The work that you and your team do to help make law firms successful is critically important. And I hope your audience uh, learned a little bit today, and if uh, at least they were entertained. <laughs> well, I learned something, so I, I feel it definitely wasn't a waste of my time. I've, I learned several things today, so I appreciate it. You're welcome, Ken. Great All to right. chat with you. All right, you too. Until next time, this is Ken Hardison, dedicated to your success. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.